So one of the hardest things that I've found for science teachers to think about as they're beginning to move toward inquiry is the evidence for it. Inquiry relies on evidence. Students start with the evidence. Teachers ask questions that the students can find answers to in the evidence. But the problem is many of us as science teachers went into science because we loved the beauty of the explanations and we learned it without evidence. Well, inquiry requires us to teach our students by starting with the evidence. So I've called in an expert back here, that butterfly bush that's in my front yard, to help us think about evidence and how we can begin inquiries with evidence. So first, <clears throat> let's think about the standard that requires elementary students to learn that all of that stuff that the butterfly bush is made of, its bark and its limbs, and all of that doesn't come from the soil. That's a common misconception. Well, we can tell the students that idea, but how would we guide them to look at that from an evidence base? Well, here's something you may not have thought of. What about the von Helmont experiment where we take kids back with historical data and they look and see from historical evidence how plants get their food from the sun and that plants don't get their food from the soil. So how does that work as you first think about that big idea that plants get their food from the sun and how to get that across to students for evidence, with evidence. Well, now let's think about something else and let's go with probably what you were thinking of with a butterfly bush, and that is this green stuff. Well, it's photosynthesis. And how do we teach photosynthesis from an evidence base? Well, remember again, we're science geeks. We love photosynthesis because of just the beauty of the idea. Um, well, kid, kids aren't that way. So how do we know and from an inquiry based that photosynthesis happens? And how can we guide students to see that? Well, I'll leave you to ponder that one because probably you can think for yourself how you could do photosynthesis from an inquiry base how you could, some of the classic experiments that we do in school often of masking portions of leaves and then they're not green anymore, or, or with little ones, how they grow things in the dark and find out that they don't grow. So you could probably think about how you could create your own inquiry to help kids learn about the concept of photosynthesis, maybe not the details, but the big idea of photosynthesis from an inquiry base. Well, another thing that the butterfly bush can help us think about, if you've seen any butterflies, I think there's one up there that's going to be hard for me to get to. How can we teach emergence of new species, evolution, from an evidence base? Well, it'd be really hard to go out and collect evidence on how butterfly bushes and how, butter, how butterflies adapted to butterfly bushes because that doesn't happen right in front of us. That only happens across the fossil record. So picture where we are today and then picture, oh, 35 million years back that way. Because, see, evolution, natural selection, they can be taught from an evidence base, but not with evidence that kids can collect right now, unless your kids happen to be practicing paleontologists. Well, butterfly evolution actually is kind of tough, because if you look at it, and if you think about it, butterflies don't fossilize very easily. But there is an evidence base for evolution, and that evidence base, like I said, is back that way millions of years ago. Maybe butterflies aren't the best example. Dinosaurs are. 
because we can only teach evolution through inquiry by looking at the fossils that make up the evidence that scientists look at when they have come to the conclusion about evolution. So let kids see the evidence for evolution by looking back at the fossil record. Now the last thing, and for you non-biology teachers out there, what about the chemical processes? How would we teach chemistry from an inquiry base? Well, this is kind of biochemistry, but there's all kinds of chemistry happening in the cells of this butterfly bush, and some of it has to do a lot with protein, protein synthesis, DNA replication, all of that. And again, we are science geeks, and we love that stuff. And we learned about protein synthesis and DNA and all of that just from the abstract idea. But what would you do with kids to get them to learn about proteins, chemicals, molecules, the chemical reactions in cells, chemical reactions in, in general, from an evidence base. Well, this is abstract, kind of like photosynthesis is abstract, and making it concrete, how about evidence from the web? How can we take kids to let them see DNA evidence, human genome project, um, all of the evidence that drug companies have collected about HIV mutations with DNA. There's a world of evidence out on the web that we can use to help kids see chemical processes within cells, chemistry itself. There's a lot of evidence out there. So stepping back, the point of all this is there is an evidence base because if there's not an evidence base, it's not science. Any scientific idea has to be grounded in evidence. But so often we as science teachers, we skip through that evidence base because we didn't need it to learn it. Inquiry says, don't make that skip. Inquiry says, go back to the evidence base, let kids collect it through hands-on with their own hands, kind of like what, we, what I said with photosynthesis with some of those simple photosynthesis experiments. But if you can't do that, then to do it inquiry-based, you've got to give them the evidence, maybe with his, a historical experiment like von Helmont, or with evidence that's out on the web, like with DNA, or with evidence on the web that goes back like the fossil record. Things that, maybe evidence that's too hard for us to collect in a classroom or too expensive or too time-consuming, but the evidence is there. And inquiry says, we've got to look at that. Well, the National Science, the Next Generation Science Standards also say the same thing. And if you look at the Next Generation Science Standards that are key to this video, you'll see that the four topics that I picked out are all things in the Next Generation Science Standards. And they're all inquiry based. It would be very hard to teach those Next Generation Science Standards without doing it inquiry based. So this is an example of how what teachers already know about inquiry can be taken up to inquiry 2.0, the next level of inquiry in the next generation science standards. Hope that helps.